Welcome to Trivia Night! What's going on? Happy Saturday. Hope everyone's weekend is going great. We're about to get into it. everybody welcome to late late horror show what is going on saturday night trivia night we've got a great one uh dr jekyll and mr hyde from 1931 frederick march uh a horror movie trivia night so here we go uh welcome everybody in the chat rtn dennis what's going on harry scott tracy asteria wwm connie clary ginger was here she left no she's listening though she's got stuff to do um, Mick G, what is going on, Mick G? Good to have you. Welcome to Trivia Night every Saturday night. I've got a lot of oldies coming up, you guys. I got The Man Who Laughs, 1928, next week. Uh, so it's going to be fun. Um, during the movie discussions, we're going giallos, and on the Trivia Nights, I get to go old school. Loving it, loving it, loving it. But uh, this is a fantastic movie. Hello, Donovan Belair. It seems like 1931 is. Not sure what you mean by that. Yeah, anyways, uh, WWM Dino, good seeing you. Uh, good seeing you guys, too. Um, yeah, I had issues, man, with the computer. Uh, we should be good. We, we're all good. We're all good. Um, but, yeah, let's have some fun, you guys. Uh, J.O.B. Uh, I like this movie a lot. Rusty Toolman. Yes, hello, hello, hello. I think this is your first trivia night. So uh, how this goes is we're going to I'm going to ask some questions. It'll be either A, B, C, or D. It'll be either true or false. It'll either be you have to answer the question, and the first one that gets it on the uh, in the chat gets a point. And um, I've got about 23 questions, so uh, we will get through them tonight. And um, Got a lot of good stuff coming up, too, here, you guys. Uh, the big party, Halloween party, okay, is on um, uh, the 22nd, Saturday. And, uh, yeah, let me see. W what date is this? Let me see. I don't want to get this mixed up. The 22nd. Oh, I put that at the same time. See, I'm going to have to change that. The man who laughs. Why did I do that? I'm, I'm going to change it right now. <laughs> Because I messed up. Because the 22nd is not going to be the man who laughs. It's going to be the week after, the 29th, uh, right before Halloween. Because the 22nd is, good thing I looked, right? Oh my God, this is how busy I've been, you guys. It's been so crazy and hectic. But just now changed it, so that'll be the man who laughs. Trivia night will be the 29th. The 22nd is the big channel Halloween party. Come in costume. Uh, we are going to judge each other on the costumes. We're going to have fun. I will be in costume. It will be a lot of fun. Um, I can't wait to see all you guys and join in with me. Um, Preacher Man, 1882. Big fan, buddy. Love the old radio broadcast. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, this, on top of the um, uh, old-time radio shows, uh, is just icing on the cake to have fun right uh so th that's what that is a uh, psychology did i miss somebody um beth germanetti what is going on good to see you beth germanetti hello everyone hope you are doing well happy driven yes 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 um no i didn't miss anyone uh seems like 1931 was a really big uh for the classic monsters sorry i accidentally hit the wrong button. no that's all right donovan blair yes 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 a big big year for horror and this possibly one of the best i mean this i i don't understand why this isn't set up above and right there with dracula frankenstein the wolfman all of them because this performance by frederick march and miriam hopkins is uh, and, and just it being pre-code and everything. I don't want to give too much away because we're going to do a trivia night on it. But um, it being pre-code and everything, they were able to let loose kind of and, and do 
what they wanted and, and pushed the limits to this movie. Um, and uh, they went above and beyond. And it was a little dark, disturbing. And this is kind of your first stalker film, you know, 1931. You know, you, you got the doctor, man. He's, he's stalking. And, and um, uh, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting, man. It, it, it's such a great film. Psychology Noir with Dr. Lund. Yes, and Rich Cat Ranch is here, I think, taking out the flock. Uh, Tracy Hysteria, yes, I think I mentioned all you guys. Um, but yeah, and what else is coming up before we get to the questions here? I also have tomorrow night, uh, I'm going to tackle an, an earlier, a newer movie, uh, 2014 if you want to call it a newer movie. It's eight years old, uh, but it's called The Editor, 2014. It's a modern giallo classic is what everybody says. I haven't seen it yet. We will see if it's a modern Giallo classic. But um, it pays homage to the old Giallo flicks and stuff like that. So me and Ginger will be doing that tomorrow night. Um, then, what do we have? I have um, Tracy's looking into Warren again to talk about the tech gear and stuff like that. Not confirmed for Monday, but maybe. Uh, then uh, Tuesday will be spooky ghost stories to get ready for Halloween. So uh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be with me. And I think Ginger's going to be, on, I mean, not Ginger, me and Tracy are going to be on there doing our ghost stories. And then, yeah, then the rest of the week, we've got tons and tons of stuff. So uh, that's kind of our uh, lineup so far. Uh, RTN, yeah, you mentioned about um, The Nutty Professor with Jerry Lewis. Uh, yes, Paying a little homage, uh, homage to uh, Doctor Jekyll, and Mister Hyde, the character, which a lot of films did back in the day, right? Uh, and, and consequently, on and on and on, right? Um, let's see. I don't want to miss anything. Dennis, this movie was kept out of circulation for many, many years because of the interior, inferior 1843, no, 1943. Um, yes, yes, yes. Well, we will talk about that, RTN. Um, uh, anyways, uh, here we go. <laughs> I think the reason is because it Jekyll and Hyde was made by Paramount and wasn't made by Universal, so I feel like that's the reason people don't add him with classic Universal monsters. Um, Donovan Blair, uh, as good an answer as any, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand why because, I mean, Frederick March, uh, he, he did such an unbelievable job. Uh, they all did. I mean, uh, I think it was 28 or 32 set designs just to recreate the city streets and, and all of this. It, it's just the story behind the making of this film. They, I mean, they put 580 thousand which was a lot for back then and in, into this movie so um yeah yeah no it's it's uh this is a good one man this is this is one uh un unlike the newer movies that i i get I, I went and watched half of the new hellraiser movie i ought to do a new stream just dedicated to the new stuff that i've just watched i think i need to do that because i've watched the new hellraiser the new Halloween movie. Uh, um, I've watched... <laughs> I've watched some series... Listen, uh, you know... I, I, I've been saying this for years now, that the new stuff is... And all the horror fans saying, yes, 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 no, you come on, you just... Host. It's not about being old school, it's just, you know, it's taken a... a turn in a for the next generation is what it did w whether you call it bad or not it's it's just horror movies have taken it these last three halloween movies they're not for us i'd say anybody 30 something and older uh i don't know how you can appreciate the new like hellraiser nah flush that down the toilet the new Halloweens. F -f Flush it down the, the toilet. Again, the, the first Halloween 2018 was a good movie. A good movie. But up and above a Halloween movie? Eh, took a change. It's, it's for a different generation. All of these movies are. All of them. Hellraiser, listen. I want, I, and I got a blab, you guys. We'll, we'll get into it really quick, you guys. And, and I see some other, uh, Trogdor, what's going on? Emily Thompson, good to see you. 
But this Hellraiser movie that I just finished last night, yes, it took me a week and a half, to, and I said, I'm going to finish it. Um, by the end, I was just like, oh, this is just ridiculous. Listen, the, the character of Pinhead was so ridiculous, it's not even funny. Uh, when, when, it's, when you got the old Pinhead, Doug Bradley, and it has nothing to do with... it. It just wasn't Pinhead. I didn't see no power, no, no. Uh, there was no magic in the priest. Of of I just, anyways. Uh, I'm gonna do a stream on the uh, newer stuff, and you guys can watch me get all that off my chest. But let's get to tonight and this trivia night, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Um, I don't even know if you guys are uh, agreeing with me or not. I don't even know. But listen, man, it's it's just I'm, it's too much, and I keep giving them chances, and they just keep disappointing. Come on, Leatherface, they're doing it to death, and they're doing every single one. Let's throw out ten movies of Leatherface in the past. I don't know how many years, and have every one of them be just crummy. Let's not just focus on making one great movie. And uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> my idea is to re-hit the Universal Monsters, but make them black and white, make them, like, during the period, like, let's make it the same time period that the original Universal Monsters did. Black and white. People will watch the black and white movies. Uh, you know, there's many instances where they've done very well. Uh, anyways, uh, I better shut up. I'm getting going to watch the Midnight Club. Uh, yes, Midnight Club... Uh, Flanagan is making some, I mean, he's making some good stuff. Uh, he's about the only one with the newer stuff. And listen, hit or miss here or there, there are some new movies that I enjoy. But the remaking stuff, the rebooting stuff, I've just, I'm just not in it. Listen, the Hellraiser Cenobites, man. It looked like play, white Play-Doh, and, and they put it back and colored a little red paint in there. It just, it looked so terrible, it, and I won't even get a, get into it with Halloween. Look, I'm stuttering. I, I can't take it no more. Okay, we're done. Um, Scooby! What is going on, Scooby? Zoinks! Scoob! What's going on? Um, let me see what you said here. Uh, hello. Yes, please uh, do a review of the Jekyll and Hyde. Told you I was waiting for this. Hellraiser, I have first last until this year. Hellraiser, I have one street last year. Okay, well, Scooby, yeah, no, the new Hellraiser. Oh, oh no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, let me see. Uh, Preacher Man, I actually have never seen a movie adaptation of Jekyll and Hyde. But as far as Universal Monsters, I was, was a big fan of Wolfman, favorite horror film ever, though, Christine. If you're a big fan of Preacher Man, and Christine's a good one, but if you're if you're a fan, Preacher Man, of Universal Horror Monsters uh, movies, then you will love this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, if, if you're just an old school fan from Silence to the 30s, 40s, you're going to love it. It's, it's just one of the greatest and I think um, underrated horror films of the time i really do i really do uh it's just so good binks what is going on uh good we we got enough people in here tab 75 draws what is going on my friend good to see you um good to see you good to be you good to know you um i am going to start the first question out hopefully i'm not too loud for you guys am, am i screaming too loud coming in loud and clear come on one two one two check check um, Scarecrow Ninja, hey, hey, okay, here we go, first question is going to be old time radio related, okay, so, uh, I figure it's going to, it might be a hard one, it probably is a hard one, some of these are going to be hard, some of these are going to be easy, okay, some are going to be in the middle, but the first one's going, might be a little hard, unless I, unless my old time radio fans here can get this answer, okay, um, and I, I'll throw out one clue. I don't know if that'll help, but and I do got horror jerky's mug here. I just finished it right before the show, so it didn't get cold. A nice big mug of hot cocoa. So uh, yeah. 
stepped away from the Ovaltine just for a bit. I have that during the day. It's cold. Uh, I, I've been hot cocoa. Winter's setting in, so here you go. Uh, but anyways, um, everyone keep your eyes out for strange movement in Dino's Funland there. Uh, yeah, you never know what might happen or what might pop up. A cat may just... A cat fight may break out right in the middle of the toys, and that would be terrible, but, you know, it may happen. Um, anyways, uh, here we go. First question of the evening for the classic. After the man who laughs, we're going to have arsenic and old lace trivia night. Listen, I'm going old school. And we're also going to do trivia night for Island of Lost Souls. So uh, stay a lookout on the front channel page for everything coming up so that you guys will be prepared okay uh feel free please join the patreon or join the channel the button is right down there okay uh movie nights every friday night at 8 p.m and i'm thinking of adding something in there um just for us to all get together just a little bit more maybe um other than a movie, like hanging out. So as where I used to think, you know, like once a month we'll all get together and hang out. Uh, it may be a little bit more frequent, like once a week um, kind of thing. So got some interesting stuff I'm reworking around on the um, good old Patreon and the channel memberships. There are the links. Thank you, Tracy Steria. I appreciate it. Um, so yes, definitely, definitely. But um, anyways, here we go. Woohoo, first question. I know RTN getting sick of hearing me, bud. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm yapping. I'm yapping. But uh, description and links to everything down below, and here we go. Old time radio fans, listen, you should get this, man. You should get this. Question number one Which old time radio show broadcast a 60 minute version of? With Frederick March in the role. If I got to give the date, you know, I'll give the date too. It was November 19th, 1950. So, which old time radio show broadcast a 60 minute version with Frederick March in the role in November 19th, 1950? Which old time radio show was it? Here we go. Terrence Sam Ritchie hanging with Dino. What's going on? Hanging around. Um, listen, Beth. All right, listen, you guys are putting A, B, C, or D, see? Throwing you off track, man. You guys are cheating. I see who cheats. Come on, Beth. Come on, Trog. <laughs> Anyways. Um, oh, you, RKO. That's a movie company. That's a movie company. I'm talking about an old-time radio show. The, the title... Okay, let's see. CBS Playhouse. Hey, Tokar! No, 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 that's not it. But good to see you, Tokar. Um, suspense, no. Lights out, no. Uh, mm. It's a little bit more CBS Radio Mr. Theater. Nope. See, I, I knew this would be hard. Uh, I will try to give a hint in a minute. Uh, ABC, nope. Yeah, no, it's a tough one. Uh, think 1950. 1950, you were getting a lot of the, uh, oh, geez, a lot of the big companies of the time putting out their kind of, you see, I'm trying not to give it away. Uh, the Mystery Theater, um, no Scooby. Uh, Tales from the Dark Side. What you doing for Halloween, says Christopher Shelton? Um, not sure yet. I'm sure I'll do something on the, on the channel here. That's for sure. Uh, anyways, the Creaking Door Hall of Fantasy. Now, I'll tell you what. It, th uh, it has to do with um, the theater uh, is, is in the title. But uh, if you can narrow down the program that aired it, it's, it's theater. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Tracy Asteria. <laughs> Tracy Asteria gets the first point. Um, you know, I mean, it's one of the lesser known, but I mean, Theater Guild on, on the air. Theater Guild on the air. So one point to Tracy with the first point. Uh, you guys were all saying the, the well-known th programs, but uh, the Theater Guild 
of the on the air um, played a lot of good programming back in the day, as did a lot of the theater and um, you know related uh, names and, and titles of shows. So um, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Just like the the rare the rare stream I did like three four days ago, somewhere around there. Um, lots of I mean, they're just one shows, and that's it. They're done. They're audition shows. Um, they didn't work out, but they're very rare. And, you know, a lot of people just, eh, not my thing. I want the regular. Bring me Johnny Dollar. So, you know, it's always good to hear good stu uh, different stuff. Uh, Thomas Chino. I love the channel. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. If, if you love it enough and want to support, uh, you can always hit that join button or uh, chase the link to uh, the Patreon. So uh, there you go. And just making one sure one time here, uh, everything seems to be working perfectly with uh, picture quality looks good. Audio sounds great. Perfect. Um, so there you go. Now they're going to get a little easier. <laughs> I figured I'd throw out that hard one right at the beginning there. Um, and I'll get all these in. Principal Photography. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Principal Photography. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, RTN, I love the Rare Show stream. Yep, some very good shows in there. There were a couple that sounded like Johnny Dollar but when it started, but it had nothing to do with that kind of show. It was very interesting. Um, so, first point to Tracy. Here we go, you guys. Uh, question number two. Um, good to see everybody tonight, everybody in chat. Uh, hopefully, you guys, Saturday and your weekend is going good. Much love to each and every one of you. Uh, hey, Mike Barrett, what's going on? Good to see you. Good to know you. Good to be you. Uh, qu question. Here we go. Um... First horror movie ever, this is a true or false, first horror movie ever to win an Academy Award. True or false? First movie, horror movie, ever to win an Academy Award. True or false? Please and thank you, ma'am, sir, your highness, your, your mistress. What? Oh, wrong, wrong direction. Um, so, looks like, dog em, or dodge em, dodge em, or dog em, says true, welcome to the chat, welcome to Trivia Night, uh, dog em, I'm going to say dog em, because I think that's how it's pronounced, although it could be dodge em, dodge em, no, dodge would be D-O-D-G, so dog em, um, rich cat ranch, Gets a point. Rich Cat. Kathy gets a point. She's got a point. Yes, it is true. 50-50 chance. That's right. That's right. It is true. March 1 for a Best Actor. Best Actor. He won it along with Wallace Berry for The Champ. Um, they kind of shared it. So, uh, but yes, March won for Best Actor. So it was the first Academy Award to go to. And let me tell you, des deserved it. A fantastic job. Fantastic. Either or maybe, maybe, probably, it's true or false. <laughs> Trogdor. PP is cool. P, principal photography. PP is cool. I got you. Kathy Capra. Kathy Capra. What is going on? Welcome to the channel. I don't know if you've been here before and just never joined in. But welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see some new names here today. Um, definitely always good. So Rich Cat with point number one. You guys going to let her run away with it this week? Again? Think about this. Okay, here we go. This is an A... Well, this is an A, B, C, or D. If I, if I get A, B, or C, or Ds early, they're not going to count. Um, how much money did this movie gross at the box office? Was it A, $900,000, B, $1 million, C, $1.3 or 
D, 5 million. So how much did it gross at the box office? A, 900,000, B, 1 million, C, 1.3 million, or D, 5 million dollars? Bum bum. Um, <laughs> tell you what, the thing is, new thank you, says Kathy Capra. Awesome! Make sure you're subscribed. We got stuff going. I keep belching. We got stuff going on every night, just about. Um, see, I'll tell you guys, listen, uh, Rich Cat, she puts in the effort and does her study. She studies up. <laughs> Uh, point number two goes to Rich Cat. Yes, it is C, $1.3 million. Uh, I think the movie was made for $589,000 and uh, made one point three. So pretty darn good. John Victor, what is going on? Looks like most the Punisher is here. Be careful, you guys. The Punisher is here. Be good. Glad I got him in the chat. Uh, welcome, the Punisher, to Trivia Night. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the 1931 version. So there you go. Um, hey, Roger Stephen Max. Roger Stephen Max. To the Max. Money wasn't worth much back when, says Trogdor. Back then or back when? RTN says E equals 140,000 drachmas. Uh, no, the exorcist was... What? We, I'm not sure, Scooby, what you're, what you're saying there. 5.6 million in today's money. Scarecrow Ninja. Yepers. Yepers. Uh, yeah, a lot of money, man. Um, the question was how much money did this film make at the box office. Not, is it the most... Anyways, I'll continue on. Here, here we go. So, uh, Rich Cat Ranch with two points. So, there you go. Old member, new name, LOL, The Punisher. Oh! You mind saying the old name? It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it's cool that you're back. Thank you. Uh, whoever you are, whoever you are. Um, they did deserve it. Yes, it is in today's money. And then, okay. So, uh, next question is, and again, kind of an easy question. Um, so get ready, you guys. J dot O dot B dot says two million Schrute bucks. <laughs> Dwight Schrute. And what can you buy with those Schrute bucks, huh? You, you can buy beets. You can buy, yeah. Anyways, uh, office fans out there uh, should, I guess, get that. Uh, Two million shroot bucks. We are curious about your own name at the Punisher. Uh, Sailor Sam! Oh, the Punisher! Sailor Sam! Sailor Sam! It's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, good to see you. Uh, so next question. An easy one. Get ready. Get ready. Yes, and it's good to know see Sailor Sam. It's it's been a long time it's from the beginning, two and a half years ago. Anyways, uh, here we go. Ten years later, who would go on to play the character of Jekyll and Hyde? Name that person. Ten years later, who would go on to reprise or not to reprise, but to play the role of Jekyll and Hyde? Ten years later. So there you go. But um bum. And again, simple answer, simple answer. You said it earlier, RTN. There you go. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, Rich Cat Ranch. There you go. See, Rich Cat? That's, that's what happens, Kathy. That's what happens. Yeah, it seems I saw his name somewhere in all that I read. Oh, yeah, Spencer Tracy. Well, again, um, it's, it's funny because... Um, Frederick March sent him a letter uh, 10 years later after the movie kind of bomb and his role was kind of lackluster. And he, he actually sent him a letter and said, jokingly, he said, thank you for the boost, you know, because um, it really pumped up the 1931 movie again. 
and kind of got people going, hey, wait a second, you know, what? this is the Jekyll and I, and just Frederick March is just, was become a legend for that role during that time, and he actually sent him a letter saying, thank you for the boost in my career, so <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, so very cool, the 41 version was just on, uh, Spencer Tracy, you know what, I never, and this is, Spencer Tracy is one of the legends to a lot of people who love old Hollywood. Spencer Tracy, to me, just didn't get it done. I don't know if it was the types of movies he did, probably, but I, I didn't care too much for Spencer Tracy, and, and that's that's rare for me to say because... A lot of the big name actors back in the day, I mean, I, I really appreciate. I really do. Uh, I'm not saying that he was a terrible actor, but I think he was one dimensional. Am I wrong? But, you know, that's that's just me. That's just me. All three Ritz brothers. <laughs> what the? Uh, yes, please hit that thumbs up. We're at 51. We need to get to 100. If you haven't hit that thumbs up button yet, please do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, a fan of Tracy, not a fan of Tracy at all, says Ran Hen, uh, Ron Hen, uh, yes, uh, again, agree with you, and I think, think people would agree with me, I mean, he, he was lackluster, I mean, just no oomph, uh, could not agree more, I never liked much he was in, there you go, there you go, lots of people agree with me, um, Anyways, uh, yes, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. That was Trivia Night. Rich Cat Ranch has got three points, and, and, and Tracy's got one. So who did their homework? Uh, next question. True or false? This was March's first big role in a movie. True or false? This was March's first big role in a movie. True or false? Yeah, that was just not a Tracy character, Emily Thompson. Nope. I uh, could not. He just. He doesn't have the range. He doesn't have the range. Does not have the range. Uh, anyways, I can only think of one movie where I liked him. It was with Katherine Hepburn, if I remember correctly. Uh, I don't remember the movie, Rich Cat, but yeah, probably, probably. You say false. Um, Trogdor says true. Trogdor says true and gets the first her first point of the evening. Erica, Erica. Um, so yes, no, it is true. This he pretty much did, um, you know, lackluster roles himself uh, before this. Um, he wasn't given a chance in Hollywood uh, before Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde in 1931. Um, this was the first big title role that he did and propelled him on to uh, more movies and bigger roles. Uh, but before this, it, it was just, you know, they were lower budget movies, bit parts. Uh, so this was the first big movie role that he was in. There you go. He was in a mad, 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 don't forget mad, world. So there you go. So he could have been in a home movie. Well, that's true, but that's not a title role, you know, but hey. Uh, so Trog has a point. Trog has a point. Rich Cat with three stone, Tracy with one. Um, Spencer Tracy was in a mad, 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 mad world, yes. Uh, now that's a good movie. Now there you go. <laughs> Three hours long. So I've got one point. Yep, yep. I, I, you're satisfied now, huh? Tracy was not my favorite uh, of playing Jekyll and Hyde. Well, geez, you know how many movies have portrayed that character, Jekyll and Hyde? So there, there's a lot over the years. But Frederick March, number one. Edward Stewart has entered the building. Number 56. Good evening, everybody. Oh, Wait, didn't I just say it was at 51 or 55? Yeah, hit that thumbs up, guys. Come on. Get to 60. 56, 57, 58, 59. No, no, it's not moving. I don't see it climbing. No, it's going. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, anyways, uh, let's see. Rayman sucked too. 
Ray and Milan. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? There you go. Kind of not a... Not a fan of Ray Milan either. Um, anyways, um, I, I don't want to get people too down on who my favorites are and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, there we go. 57 thumbs up. I'm going to do a count throughout the show. Um, Bubba. Good to see you, Bubba. Good to see you. Good to know you, my friend. Uh, on to the next question. Next question. Listen very carefully, because this has to do with a scene in the movie, an important scene, the transformation scene. So you type in the answer, okay? So listen, be ready, type in the answer. Uh, what sound, main sound, could you hear during the trans transformation scene? What Main sound could you hear during the transformation scene? And go. Ba -dum -bum. 61, there you go. 61, thumbs up. Gets us way, way good. Um, wow, okay. I thought that would be kind of a harder one. Oh, look at that. Um, oh, yeah. Tracy's got it too. Uh, but it looks as if Bubbles, <laughs> truck door, a scene I've never seen, breathing, fart, uh, heart beer, water gurgling, <laughs> stomach bubbles, uh, a lub tub, a, a lub dub machine, music, uh, Rich Cat Ranch got it, Rich Cat Ranch got it, it is a heart pounding, a pounding heart, um, and they recorded Frederick March's own heart beating after he. They told him go. He ran up the steps, like boom, twice, and then they came back and they recorded it, boom, 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 and you hear that, and it's his heartbeat at, during that transformation scene, and very, very iconic, um, very, very good. So congrats there. Uh, Rich Cat with, with four points, and Tracy won, Trogdor won. Um, very good. Cliff Edwards yodeling. <laughs> Moaning. Bubbles and violins. Um, yeah, we do got a show, do a show where we uh, get all incorrect answers and, and pick the best one. That wolf howl we heard last night. Ed, your Halloween pictures look great. Yes, Bubba. Um, Edward Stewart. Always love when you post your pictures. Um, I may not comment, but I see them uh, in the Discord. Uh, I know Derby Girl uh, posted some today too, and Connie did the other day. Uh, awesome on Discord, which is, you know, you become a channel member, a Patreon member, you get access to uh, Discord also, uh, where everybody can talk any time of the day they want, post pictures, stuff like that. So, um, yes, lots of uh, benefits for uh, being a channel member or a Patreon member. Um, not, not that you, yeah, but anyways, uh, so yes, 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 Bubbles and Violins, a burlesque act, less than this film, ooh, anyways, um, on to the next question, here we go, you need to answer the question, so first one to type it in, um, gets the point, and thank you Tracy for the links, uh, to join Patreon, or join the channel member, uh, they're both awesome. There you go. Did they really use bubbles and violins, or, or was it like all rock and pilots and the two guys? Uh, yeah, I, th I think RTN's joking, but you know, hey, who knows? Who knows? Okay, so next question. Type in the answer during filming, and this is this is a known thing. So during filming. What part of March, Frederick March's body was almost damaged? Uh, during filming, what part of uh, Frederick March's body was almost damaged? And then I'll explain why. Um, be watching. Good luck, everyone. Thank you, Edward Stewart. Good to have you here. Good to, good to know you're around. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and to Penny as well. Yes, yes. Hopefully you two are doing very, very well. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. 
Rich Cat. Rich Cat. Five points. Right before Tracy. Tracy came in second. Oh, okay. Uh, Emily Thompson says face. John Victor says face. Uh, Dino, you know you're the <laughs> You know, uh, well, I don't know about that, uh, Scooby, but thank you. Zoinks, Scoob! <laughs> like, where's... Wait, what? Um, everybody seems to have got foot, his hands, his Achilles tendons, hands. Yes, it was his face. It was his face. I could have made it a two-parter, but it was his face. It was because of the makeup. Um, the layers of makeup that were put on his face and the process that he went through with the chemicals and... Uh, because they, they used colored filters to, to, you know, even though it was black and white, to kind of portray the transformation and how he wore it. And, um, yeah, and there, there is an interesting fact. That after the shooting of this film, he did enter the hospital. He was hospitalized after the film. Uh, it took a toll on him. Uh, so um, there is that. Um, but anyways, yes, yeah, so, uh, Rich Cat and Tracy got the answer, and so did a couple others, so congratulations there. Weave's World, I was just, yeah, hey, what's going on, Weave's World? Uh, good to see ya. Welcome to the chat. I think very first time I ever seen you enter the chat, so welcome, welcome. Yes, Toxic Chemicals, um, Ron, and... Kind of the weight of, of how everything was, was on and the pores. Yes, yes, yes. Very much so. Um, was it the makeup, allergic reaction, and suffocation? All in all of it, Trogdor. All of it. Uh, one of my favorite sayings in the film. I'll show you what horror means. Oh, Edward Stewart. Man. The, the lines in this film because of the acting, uh, Marion, Miriam Hopkins. I mean, gee, uh, I don't know what to say. I try not giving anything away because I'm ans asking questions and I don't want to say anything that'll give a, a question away. But, uh, anyways, or blood poisoning. Um, yes. Anyways, next question. Moving on. Uh, looks like rich cat ranch may, may win this one too. Um, all I can say is watch the movie uh, beforehand next time, you guys. Come on. Uh, missing a lot of regulars. Uh, ooh, missing some regulars for Trivia Night. Um, anyways, next question. Here we go. This I want you... Okay. Um, I'm trying to see how I should do this. Okay, this is true or false. True or false? True or false? Um, this is the only version of this film that the name was pronounced correctly. This is the only version of this film where Frederick March's, or the main character's name, uh, was pronounced correctly. True or false? That was kind of a... Uh, uh. Um, RTN! RTN gets a point. So there you go. RTN, one point to you, my friend. Uh, yeah, that was a little tricky. I, I, I wrote these down and, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to read it. But uh, true. Some say false. Um, this is the first and I do believe only film that pronounced... The name Dr. Jekyll correctly uh, because the pronunciation is Jekyll, as in J E E K A L L. Jekyll. So, uh, Dr. Jekyll. Uh, so, this is the only film, this is the only one, man, uh, that did it. So, uh, there you go. Please wait for the question. Y yeah, exactly, Terrence. Got some cheaters in here. No, I'm just... NB! Uh, the 1931 is rare, but supposedly it's the best. Yes! I watched the 1920 a few weeks ago, and it was a uh, very good silent movie. Yes, that's a good one too, NB. CM, what's going on? RTNC, on my way to winning now. Y'all might as well give up. <laughs> um, yes, good to have you here, Kathy. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Uh, did I miss 
Kathy, which Kathy was it? Kathy, I do not know any of the answers to this movie. I'm just here to hang out with you, my friends. Much love, Kathy. Good to see you. The 1932 version said it right and correctly. Yes, yes. Uh, again, I do believe the only one rhymes with LOL. Uh, Jeekle, 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 Jiggle, Jiggle, Jiggle. I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, the Wiggles, Wiggles, J dot O dot B. Hey, this is kind of clear. What's going on? Uh, anyways, um, here we go. Next question. I refuse to pronounce it that way, Trogdart. Because, yeah, when you're grown up your whole life thinking it's Jekyll, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you know, but it's technically Dr. Jekyll. But anyways, uh, you know, I mean, in my head, Dr. Jekyll sounds better too. Heckle and Jekyll. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just something you're brought up with, and, and, and it sounds better. So next question. This is an A, B, C, or D question, okay? Mr. Hyde's character was based on what? Mr. Hyde's character was based on what? A, Phantom of the Opera, his look. Mr. Hyde's character in his look was based on what? A, Phantom of the Opera. B, Werewolf, C, Elephant Man, or D, Neanderthal Man. So, uh, Mr. Hyde's character was based on what? A, Phantom of the Opera, B, Werewolf, C, Elephant Man, or D, Neanderthal Man. Well, look at this. Music was by Johann Sebastian Bach. Yes, Terrence, Mc Terrence M. Ritchie. Uh, during the heart-pounding scene in the soundtrack, uh, you will hear Bach playing in the background uh, also. And yes, yes, exactly right. Um, and Aardvarks is RTN. Um, looks like some of you got it right. Tracy Asteria gets it first. Tracy Asteria has got her second point. Because she answered D, or she just typed it out, Neanderthal man. Neanderthal man, uh, personality disorders. And Neanderthal man, uh, you know, he kind of went with that look too. Because in the story, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it's man going back to his primal instincts, uh, you know, wh where he's stalking the character of Marion Hopkins, Ivy. And, you know, he, he wants to, uh, you know, it's just, I mean, listen, there's a lot of, boy, I, it's hard to say this name, but rape scenes and stuff like that and just sexual things that, it, anyways, it's a very disturbing pre-code. I mean, able to say these things, you know, and reference these uh, very, 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 very. Um, anyways, so it was D. Neanderthal Man. Very good. Uh, Edward Stewart, my oldest, Dr. Jekyll. 1911 with James Cruz, released 1912, a tr Tannhauser Company. I don't think I've seen that, Edward Stewart. Um, probably on YouTube, I'm sure. Probably on YouTube, but I I'll have to check that out. Um, it's never really talked about, so not sure how good it is. Yeah, Phantom may have been written after the story. Um, Freddy Krueger says, Scarecrow Ninja. Uh, so, yes, Tracy's got two, Rich Cat with five, Trogdor one, and RTN one. Emily Thompson, I know a lot of these, but can't get in first. Uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, Ra Ra Hen, uh, one million BC. Uh, talking Raquel Welch? When you, I loved Heckle and Jekyll. Yeah, me too. It was a silent film. A silent film. Um, I don't know why those E's are capitalized. Uh, Ra yes. Raquel Welch. Yipper. Yipper. Okay, next. Moving on to the next question. This is an ABC or D12. And again, controversial. Ivy's character had what profession? A, barmaid. 
B, nurse, C, prostitute, or D, beggar. So Ivy's character had what profession? A, barmaid, B, nurse, C, prostitute, or D, beggar. Ivy's character. <laughs> oh, jeez. RTN, look at him. Woo! He's got two points now, too. Look at you. Look at you. A courtesan. Oh, very good. Yeah, I mean, that's a given. I, I think everybody, well, although the Punisher says A, women, women of the night. <laughs> women of the night. A trollop. Yeah, bring them all on there, RTN Tennis. Uh, yes, you are correct. RTN got it first to the C prostitute. Um, you know, this was pre-code, so they went with prostitute. Um, in, in in the subsequent film with Spencer Tracy, 1941, uh, they went with a barmaid. She was a barmaid. Uh, they they after the they stuck to the code, and they didn't use prostitute. Um, you know. It, controversial, right? I mean, but pre-code, you go with, you know, they pushed it to the limit. So there you go. <laughs> oh, man, I know my prostitutes. Wasn't she a bar singer? Uh, she was in the bar, Punisher, Sailor Sam. She was in the bar, but she was a prostitute. So anyways, um, thus... Um, the proposition and hide take going back to her room and then trapping her and you know anyways Sheldon Lewis another Dr. Jekyll not sure on the year huh not sure I seen that either a corner worker says <laughs> Scarecrow Ninja Spencer was inferior in this row. Yep, most agreed. Um, we did touch on that, that's for sure. You can be a floozy with no monetary exchange. Um, that is a good term, principal photography. Influencer! Oh, jeez, <laughs> what the heck? Oh, my! Oh, my! So what does that make me? Anyways. Okay, so, red light lady. <laughs> red light lady. Red light. Red light, green light. On to the next question. Here we go. Between 1913 and 1919, says Edward Stewart. Sheldon Gordon. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, you know what? I mean, the minute film came out, the silent pictures, when they... the. Again, what was the, I think it was like eighty percent of those movies have just they're just gone, never to be found again. I mean, a large percentage of those films will never be, you know, we'll never see them. But they're written down, and you know, you know, oh my God, they this person played that role, and it's it's sad. It's sad. every now and then. They break into a vault or somebody opens up their parents' basement or somebody in Hollywood finds something in a safe or something like that and um, it appears. It's been a while since one has appeared. I can't remember the last big name movie to appear and go, wow, that's the, it's sad. Oh, yeah, no, Connie, it's, it's, it's very sad. Um but they didn't know how to take care of the film. You know, we, over the years they learned about the acid and, and all of the chemicals that you know deteriorated over time, and they they figured out how to save it, or at least you know kind of slow down the process of decay. Um, you are a content creator, you know. <laughs> thank, thank you. I'm not an influencer. Oh yeah, that's true. That's that's different. They just found another Harold Lloyd short from 1916. Woo! RTN, no way! I missed that. So sad, so many films destroyed, lost forever. Oh, God, yeah. Well, the same thing with the old-time radio shows, you guys. We're at 67 thumbs up. Are we going to make it to 100 tonight? I mean, we're going pretty good here. Uh, let's. If you haven't hit that thumbs up, you guys, 
hit that thumbs up, please. Uh, I, 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 for this, I would hope we get to 100 thumbs up. Um, so definitely please hit that thumbs up. Um, it breaks my heart that so many are gone. Weren't the old films very flammable? Uh, fires? Fires, yes. Um, just deterioration, you know. Uh, I, I think one producer uh, in the 50s went to his storeroom and he hadn't been in there for years and everything, I mean, you're talking thousands of reels of film were just decayed and broken down to the point of it couldn't be restored. Um, I can't remember the, the producer's name, but from one of the big name studios. And it's just so sad. But uh, just like the old time radio shows, man, you know how many are lost? I mean, there's a lot of shows that just, when it first started there, they're just not around no more, you know? I mean, so many, so many. There are over 123 film versions of Jekyll and Hyde. Holy Moses. Uh, I didn't even come up with that. Exactly. Do you know there was a Hunchback of Notre Dame around 1910, 1915? Yep. And, and those are that's around the era that most of these films kind of, you know, decayed and got lost. And, you know, it, it's, it's sad. But an explosion practically wiped out all of the Fox film archives in the, in the 1930s. RTN. Yep. Yepper. Um, most of the shadow shows are lost. Yes, Tab 75, and that's such a shame. You know, and, and, and I hope and, and I think somewhere out there, somewhere out there, they're around. You know what I mean? Somebody's got them somewhere. And just don't know it or don't want to let people know about it although you think they would be you know it'd be worth something that's for sure but anyways um yeah tonight you guys uh, overnight again 68 thumbs up only 68 let's 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 get some thumbs up um joins super chats whatever you want um yeah, overnight tonight, we're going to have Dragnet all night. It's been a while since I've ran a uh, Dragnet stream, and uh, it'll be Dragnet all night tonight. So there you go. Uh, should be a good shoe. Um, so, so, so I tried to stay away from it, um, but since everybody, somebody mentioned it a couple times, I, I'll get past it. This movie, next question. you got to write it out exactly the way it should be. Okay, so here you go. And thanks for the link there, Tracy, uh, to the merch store. Um, this movie was based on a book by what author and, nov and nov novella? What was the? Let's just say this. Uh, we all know it's Robert Louis Stevenson, okay? But what was the name of the novella, okay? Uh, because many people, I mean, that's just a common sense yeah you already said robert lewis Steve, yeah already there already there but what was the name oh god i'm belching of the novella what was the name of the novella it was it wasn't a full-fledged it was a novella yeah so novella not about the dr seuss marion hopkins was good in this marion hopkins was hot uh, oh wait oh she's no she was very um the word you would use would be sexy is, is what you would use for Marion Miriam Hopkins in this. Uh, oh, see? Okay, so I did get you. Uh, like the name of the novella, okay? Because, yeah, we all know it's Robert Louis Stevenson, Louis Stevenson, but what was the name of the novella? And there you go. There you go. <laughs> Rich Cat Ranch. Six points. It is exactly that. Uh, the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mwahahaha. Robert Lur Stevenson. Yeah, okay, now we got it coming in. Captain Billy's whiz bang. <laughs> what the? Dennis, what the heck is that? 
I know that's probably a real thing. I, I just I've never heard of that before. Captain Billy's whiz bang. Oh my! The horror of Doctor Jekyll. Um, Edward Sears is exactly just like the 1910 Frankenstein was found in Oklahoma around 1989. The original print had the owner name put into it at the time. Yes, and, and there's like versions that are really bad and they end up finding really good copies of too. So, yeah, there's novella like this vela. There's no vela like this vela like no vela I've known. Yes, RTN, coming up with the puns. Boom, boom. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's on point tonight, man. I'll tell you that, Muss. I just clicked the thumbs up. Oh, yes. Kool-Aid voice. In a Kool-Aid voice. Yeah, we're at 72. Uh, half an hour to get to 100. The record is getting to 100 thumbs up at the top of the hour. So two more minutes. Well, well no, we're there now. Nine o'clock. Uh, that is the record for the most thumbs up, but I wasn't pushing it at the start. So there you go. Dr. J and Hydes. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Let's keep her going. Let's keep her going. Keep her moving. Here we go. Oh, geez. I just said this answer. Uh, I'm going to say it anyways. Let's see if you guys remember. Uh, see, when I talk about it early on, you know, I start, I, I kind of let things slip. But I'm going to ask it anyways, first person to get it. Anonymous! Anonymous! Anonymous, but Anonymous! Uh, hi, everyone, just woke up 2 a.m., but going to put my PlayStation to use, but we'll be listening. Very good, Anonymous! Good to see ya! Enjoy that PlayStation, huh? Um, let us know what game you're playing. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. Although I mentioned this, let's say it again. Uh, Frederick March sh shared his best actor award with what actor that year? And for what movie? I said it earlier. You guys should remember. Uh, Frederick March shared his best actor award with what Actor and uh, for that year. Uh, name the actor. Name the movie. Um, she's doing fantastic, CM. Good to know. Edward Penny, can you hear me? Penny, are you there? Edward's uh, doing trivia night. Um, sorry, Edward. Oops. Um, let's see. Okay, and. Uh, Ah, Rich Cat, I'm going to give it to RTN. I did say actor and name of the movie. So that gives you three points, RTN. So, Dennis, this is the best you've done. Yes, I did say it early on. It slipped out. Wallace Berry for The Champ shared the Oscar with Frederick March for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'm going to say Dr. Jekyll now just to annoy people. Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll. Uh, so yes, yes, yes. Uh, Rich Cat Stone laid with six points. Uh, RTN three, Trogdor one, Tracy Hysteria two. And boy, is my stomach going. Hey, man, I need some food. What's going on with you? Uh, get something down here. Yo, hey, mouth, what's up? Pour me down some cool something. I don't know. I need food. Anyways, I'm playing Nintendo Castlevania on my retro system while listening in on Dino. Uh, J dot O dot B dot. Uh, that, very cool. Castlevania. Old school is all the way, man. That's the way to go. King Kronos DC 84 Space PSN. What is going on? Don't catch these live often. Happy to tonight, though. Good to have you, King Kronos. Welcome. Good to see you in the chat. Uh, good to know you're around. Good to... The name gets stored up there in the memory. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, but the name gets stored up there, and I'll never forget it now when you pop in again. So uh, thanks for saying hi and popping in the chat. Uh, King Kronos DC 84 space PSN. Way to go. Uh, passes Dino a mozzarella stick. Oh, my God. Is that what you're eating, Rich Can? Is it with the red sauce and all? Yeah? Oh, 
What am I going to eat? Dilemmas, dilemmas. Um, okay, so on to the next question. Let's keep it going. Castlevania has the best soundtrack. Yeah, I've got a, um emulator and all that good stuff on the one somewhere with uh, all the old Atari, uh, which there were like over 2,000 Atari games, um, which 80% of them are, are crap. But uh, there is a handful that are interesting. There's Friday the 13th has a game. I think Freddy Krueger has a game. E.T. I mean, yeah, I mean, all, all the big ones, man. There, I think there's a ha Halloween one. Um, next question is A, B, C, or D. Here we go. What... What benefited this movie as one of the best ever for the Dr. Jekyll and Hyde movies? So what benefited this movie as one of the best ever for the Jekyll and Hyde movie? Is it A, su superior set designs? Was it B, Frederick March? Was it, was it C, the pre-code? Or was it D, all of the above? <laughs> Uh, hey, Poetic Justice, what's going on? Good to know you're here. Good to see you. How you doing? Uh, breaking the song. Break a day. Oh, wow. Some strange answers there, huh? Look at that. Oh, boy. I thought I would trick you guys there, and I guess I did. Um, Looks as if Dennis... Dennis, can you win a trivia night? I mean, you're still two behind Rich Cat Ranch, but and she took the flock out early. But you got four points now, my friend. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a given. Is It's all of them. It's, it's D, all of the above. It's kind of a trick question. I mean, the superior set designs, which I can go in discussion for... A long time on that. I mean, you know, they they resurrected 32, 28, 32, somewhere around there. Uh, you know, recreated the set designs with with. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Frederick March, uh, the pre code made this what it was. You know, you wouldn't get the content and the strong acting and story that you get if you didn't have it as a pre code. So all of the above. So. Um, Congrats there, RTN. Uh, yes, yes, yes. 77 thumbs up. Somebody took one away. Somebody took a thumbs up away. Um, Preacher Man, the angry uh, video game nerd dedicated a few of his to the uh, funny stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, for all of the times that RTN has selected. Oh, geez. Oh, my God. That green. That green popped up out of nowhere. Horror Junkie for Life. Horror Junkie for Life just gifted five Late Late Horror Show memberships. Thank you. Thank you, Horror Junkie. And it's awful nice of you to do to these individuals. Um, King Kronos, DC84. Uh, look at that. You were gifted a channel membership uh, as well as Glenn Davis. Jules PDX, Jeremy Bear, and our own Cross Clark, otherwise known as Orange, uh, was gifted. So uh, thank you, thank you, Horror Junkie. Much love to you. Uh, thank you. So all of you guys, uh, King Kronos, man, every Friday night, make sure you look at the perks button on the channel page here. Uh, every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, we have movie night, and we do put polls up for the movies to watch. Sometimes I don't, and I just pick a movie. But uh, lots of stuff, so check that out. Um, again, Horror Junkie, much love to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, always means a lot. Always means a lot. You know, a couple of these people just keep getting re-gifted. Uh, Jeremy Bear, I think... I think that's your third, maybe. Uh, Jules PDX, I know that might be your second. Um, Glenn Davis, too. So hopefully after this ends, you guys continue and you enjoy and you stick around. But anyways, uh, stop breathing so hard down my neck. RTN Productions, yeah. Hey, listen, 
He hasn't won before. Uh, Horror Junkie for Life. Oh, thank you, Tracy Hysteria. Hey, listen, uh, I can't say enough to, to you. We're stuck at 77 thumbs up. Uh, I know somebody hasn't hit that thumbs up. Hit it if you're enjoying the stream. If, if you're not, then don't hit it. Um, hit the dislike. Uh, anyways, next question. Who? Next question. There we go. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you, Horror Junkie for Life. Um, yeah, it's weird that um, we're stuck at that thumbs up, 77. Huh. Interesting, interesting. Um, Poetic Justice with a 99 cent super, super sticker. Uh, sunglasses, very cool, very cool. Thank you, Poetic Justice. Much love to you, much love to you. Um, King Kronos uh, DC84 says, uh, thanks, Horror Junkie. Appreciate it. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes. Movie nights are fun, uh, King Kronos. So hopefully we'll see you there, man. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you, Poetic Justice. Much love to you. Thank you, thank you. Um, next question. Whose nephew has, his, has an uncredited role in this movie? Whose nephew has an uncredited role in this movie? Tricky question or not? I, I don't know. You be the judge. Judge, jury, and executioner. Yep. Thanks for the follow on Twitter, Tracy. Uh, oh, well, there you go, principal photography. Um, King Kronos, DC, 84. Space PSN got a little devil sticker there. 99 sub super sticker. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, King Kronos. Appreciate it. Um, much stuff to you, my friend. Good having you here in the chat this evening. Um, oh, and she wouldn't let this one get away, huh? Uh, Donald Duck's nephew Dewey says RTN. Um, now that I'm done with school, I can attend movie nights. Awesome, Horror Junkie. Uh, like I said, we miss you there. Yep, yep, always fun. Um, I, I have a dilemma this week on what to do for the next movie night because I want it to be something to really get you in the mood for Halloween. I don't know if it's a classic Friday the 13th. But anyways, Rich Cat Ranch got that. Uh, Robert Lewis Stevenson's uh, nephew. Uh, so she, Kathy's now got seven points. RTN in second with four. Very, very, very good job this week, Dennis. Tracy two and Trogdor one. So, yeah, got the dilemma for this this week's movie. I was going to pick one, and I am going to pick one. I don't think I'm going to put a poll up. Uh, I'm going to pick one that says Halloween. I, we just we just did Halloween 1978. Um, so I'm not sure. By Monday, you'll know. Uh, we will do... I'm not sure whether to go old school and the Universal Monster or whether to do another classic Halloween type movie. I'm almost thinking of Halloween 3 because I love that movie. It has nothing to do with Michael Myers, but it's one of my favorite Halloween movies. Uh, so that may be uh, what we do. Halloween the night Ed came home. Oh boy, wreck the place! Wreck the place, people! Boom! Oh, still need that shirt up in the store, but, you know, I don't think it would go over well without, you know, I, I could come up with something. I'm going to do get a Wreck the Place uh, t-shirt. It doesn't need to have Ed's picture on it. I'll find a funny picture. Um, anyways, I'll take a funny one of me. I, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. Uh, so, anyways, thank you, Horror Junkie. Thank you, Poetic Justice. Thank you, King Kronos, uh, very much. Uh, got, we just got one more thumbs up. You know we're not gonna we're not gonna hit that hundred dollar uh, hundred dollar hundred thumbs up mark this week. It's um, strange. RTN Halloween three is a fantastic choice, and it's very Halloweeny. Halloweeny. It's very Halloweeny. Do the the fr, do Friday the thirteenth, you know, in memory of Ted uh, White, who just passed away at ninety six. Oh, well, see now you threw that in there, and. Uh, do I got two movie nights before Halloween? Let's see. Um, 21st and 28th. So, yes. Okay. So, 
maybe we'll have that planned for the next two weeks. I think this week, I think it may be Halloween 3, and then the next week, or Friday the 13th, maybe this week, and then Halloween the following, because it's trick-or-treat related. So maybe that's the way to go uh, in memory. So there you go. Um, okay, so next question. Let's get another one in. Uh, it does look like Rich Cat uh, is going to win, but RTN has a respectable four points. Uh, is that official wreckage announcement for tonight, Rich Cat Ranch? Uh, I think so, um, and, and I better write this down. Wreck the place t-shirt. Well, you know what? I mean, listen, I've got so much cool stuff in the merch store, and I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. took me a long time and a lot of hard work to get all of the designs up in the store for shirts, blankets, pillows, uh, mugs, tumblers, co it, you name it, it's up there. And so many cool designs. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't get really, it's very rare to get a, you know, a buy. Um, so, you know, is that because I don't plug? I just don't, I can't constantly keep plugging it. I drive you guys nuts. But um, with that said, uh, wreck the place t-shirt, I think I will work on. Um, I wrote it down. It's coming up. So next question. Uh, here we go. Yeah, there's a Pepe hat and a Pepe shirt. And Pepe comes from Bold Venture, um, a great show. And uh, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, Tracy Asteria, $10 super sticker. Thank you. That pair, that green pair with the headband is is thanking me um and it's thank you uh, and it's a thank you um the pair keeps thank you pair it keeps bowing and i'm a, i'm like okay okay i guess i gotta look away uh the pair doesn't stop bowing until i walk away and stop looking so thank you thank you tracy Asteria, for the ten dollar super sticker much appreciated. Very, very much, very, very much. Coffee mugs, color me there. Preacher man. Oh, you know, listen. Um, there's one in the front there. If you can, on the left of the skull in the front, that's a vintage one. And the one with the eyeball is a steel tumbler right there. Uh, that is for like water and drinks it's it, it, they're excellent quality and they look great and there's all different styles so there you go next question let me get this in there and tracy hysteria there with the merch link thank you thank you thank you halloween 3 is an underrated movie i think it was just called season of the witch it would have uh fared better better um i well it's 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 Scarecrow, it's it's become a cult classic, and a lot of people love it for what it is. I'm one of them. Uh, next question, A, B, C, or D, what ranking was this movie at the box office for 1932? What ranking was this at the box office for 1932? A, first, B, fifth, C, eighth, or D, tenth? So what ranking was this at the box office in 1932? A first, B fifth, C eighth, or D tenth? Exactly. Love the storyline of three. Oh, Edward. Yes, yes. Lark Bark! Hey, y'all! What's going on? What's going on? Good to see you. Good to know you. Good to be you. Good to see you here. As always, Lark Bark. Um... Tracy Asteria came in real fast with that one, right? Look, look at that. Tracy Asteria now with three points. Uh, RTN with four. So let's see how this pans out, right? Hit that thumbs up button. We're one away from 80. Um, so yeah, Tracy Asteria got it first. It is C, eighth. It was eighth at the box office in 1932. Uh, 1932 is its main $1.3 million bulk what, that it made. Um, it came out... Wait, no, I better watch. I better watch. I don't know if I got a question there. Um, 
I don't think I do. It came out December 31st, 1931. The last day of the year in 1931. So it's, it's, it's release date is 1931, but for one day. And then the expanse of its time was uh, 1932. And it, it ranked eighth in overall um, sales uh, that year in 1932. And there were some vague name pictures that year. So there you go. Very cool. And hopefully that wasn't a question anywhere because, uh, oh, geez, I better hurry up, man. I, I still got some questions. Here we go. Uh, I, I worked hard on these. I don't want to give these give these up. Dang, I should have been a little quicker. Um, Let me see. I want to see. Okay, here's one. Here's one. A, B, C, or D. How does Hyde die in the film? A. Poison. B. Jumps off a bridge. C. Gunshot. Or D. Strangled. Strangled by the wishes of Mary. Anyways, uh, how does Hyde die in the film? You get crazy here is what you get. A. Poison. B. Jumps off a bridge. C. Gunshot. Or D. Strangles. Go over time, Dino. Oh, God. You know, I, I could a little bit. You know, yeah, I want to do these questions. Um, I could always, uh, yeah, I, I got time to, uh, yeah. Thanks again for the super chat there, Tracy, and uh, everybody else, King Kronos, Horror Junkie, um, Poetic Justice. Yes, yes. Um, let's see who gets it first. Um, Oh, RTN. RTN gets his fifth point. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it, Dennis. I'm loving it just for you, man. Uh, good friend, man of the channel. I, I just, uh, yes, it was C, gunshot. Uh, so he was shot in, oh, oh, in death fashion, in old time death fashion. Um, so, yeah, very good. You got five points now, man. Rich Cat Ranch with seven, Tracy with three, and Trogdor with one. So, uh, very good. E, starvation. Oh, boy. Eh, that'll, that'll do. It'll take a long time, but CM Piano fell on him. RTN wrecked the place. <laughs> Edward. Uh... Yeah, no, Dennis, you're doing good, man. Uh, and I know you always bring this movie up, so you know I know I know that you you love this film. Okay, so here you go, A, B, C, or D. This film was also the first to a break the two million dollar mark. B be filmed at a film festival. C. Use a real prostitute as a character. Or D. To film in panel vision. Question number 15. Please pass me your handkerchief so I can wipe this nervous sweat away. RTN Productions says Rich Cat Ranch Kathy. She says she's really nervous about Edward Stewart coming back and winning this whole thing. It's what she's got going on. Break the fourth wall. Um, let's see. CM. CM. Uh, Rich Cat D? Question mark. Um, CM has a point. First point for CM tonight. Good on you, CM. Uh, another one on the board. Another one on the board. Another one on another one. It is B. It is the first film to be filmed at a film festival. First film to be viewed at a film festival. So there you go. Um, I didn't write down the exact festival, but it's 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 true. It's true. <laughs> so, so there you go. CM, congrats on that one. Edward Stewart, he's wrecking the place. Penny's going, Ed, what is up with you? What are you doing? Stop wrecking the place. 
Yeah, no. Penny gets on him, man. Um, <laughs> uh, that is a pretty cool trivia fact. Th thank you, Tracy. Um, yeah, congratulations there. Uh, C. Elm. C. Elm. Thank you very much. So, any, anyways, uh, anywho, until Team America. Oh, God. Getting in that Halloween spirit. You, you better believe that. Relaxing music for sleep. Says, hey, y'all. And I say, hey, y'all. Are you relaxed? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're almost at the end. Uh, it's a close one between RTN and Rich Cat. Let me get another question here in. Uh, here we go. A, B, C, or D again. Um, which big name actor was offered the role for this 1931 version? Was it A, Edward G. Robinson? Was it B, a young James Cagney? Was it C, Claude Rains? Or was it D, John Barrymore? So which big name actor was also offered the role for this 1931 version? Edward G. Robinson, A. B, a young James Cagney. C, Claude Rains. Or D, John Barrymore. Night Fright Talk Show, you the man. Edward, am I going to have to uh, send Lupe and Lolita on you? Oh, boy. Uh, missed you, too, relaxing music for sleep. Um, rich Cat, just not going to let it go. Got the point. Yes, it is D, John Barrymore. Could you imagine James Cagney playing this role? A young James Cagney. Oh. Oh, but listen, Frederick March is the man, and I don't think anybody else has ever played it better, and he is the man, uh, so there you go, uh, W.C. Fields, um, looks like a lot of people got it, <laughs> Lark Bark, yeah, just a little too profane, uh, anyways, that, <laughs> I got you though, Team America is... The, the, I love Team America. Um, the, anything puppeteers or stop motion, I love, man. Um, they can be creepy, but, you know. Uh, 79 thumbs up. Let's at least get to 80. Is there somebody out there in the chat, 46 watching, that hasn't hit the thumbs up button yet? Uh, if not, please do. Barrymore was older and drinking too much more at the time. So CM, yes, 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 and yes. Yes. Yes, he did. Um, C Cagney would have been horrible. <laughs> um, See, so yeah, um, I'm just a big James Cagney fan. I would have liked to have seen how he could have done this film. But um, anyways. Okay, so next question. I I I'm getting close to getting to all the questions. Um, 80 thumbs up. Thank you. At least we got the 80. I feel a little bit better. But there you go. Still a little down that it's not 100. Uh, and we're almost at 9.30. Um, okay, next question. Another A, B, C, or D. Dr. Jekyll had what occupation? A, scientist. B, doctor. C, lawyer. Or D, druggist. So Dr. Jekyll had what occupation? A, scientist. B, doctor. C, lawyer. Or D, druggist. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, James Cagney's amazing. Oh, my God. But he's the gangster man. I mean, he, he, he's, he's the tough guy, you know. But, you know, he's, he did more than just that. I mean, I will admit I didn't enjoy the musical. But, you know, hey. <laughs> um... J-O-B, Corpse Bride, best scene. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I love Corpse Bride. Love Corpse Bride. Lacey would have been better than Cagney for sure. Cagney and Lacey. <laughs> Good one, Kathy. Good one. RTN with a six point. Oh, my. RTN is on a roll tonight. Yes, it's B, Doctor. B, Doctor. A um, little bit all over the place there. Uh, 
Edward Stewart, Cagney was so good in The Man of a Thousand Faces. Love that movie. Heck yeah. Um, so yeah, a little varying degrees of uh, E-Soda Jerk. Shemp Howard uh, was a, a soda jerk in uh, the Abbott and Costello film. Who done it? Who done it? Is that it? He was in a couple. He was he was in two or three, I think, Abbott and Costello films. Anyways, he was good in the time of your life. James Cagney is the villain you want to root for. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here next question. I'm I'm, I'm getting there. Getting there. Here we go. Okay, name, name the answer. Name the answer. This one, let's see how tough this is, if you guys remember. What eventual clue, object, found at the site of Ivy's death, leads them to Dr. Jekyll? So what eventual, uh, eventual clue, object, found at the site of Ivy's death, leads them to Dr. Jekyll. And the answer is, I think he should have won the Oscar for White Heat. I'd agree. I'd have to go back and look at the films again, but I mean, White Heat's just top of the top, top, top. Uh, in one episode of Bowery Boys as well. Dragnet all night long. There's the link. Right after this of Dragnet. Up all night. Thank you, Rich Cat Ranch. Appreciate it. Um, a beaker. Oh, is this going to be a little tough? Empty vial. Drinking vials. A cloak. Scarf. Stethoscope. Cadaver. Beaker. Oh. Ah, so I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha on this one, huh? Listen, it's... it's um. It's, how about I say this? What empty pack of Fatima's <laughs> RTN? What, what of, what clue that belonged to Dr. Jekyll was found at the scene of the crime? How about that? What clue or object of Dr. Jekyll's was found at the scene of the crime. A set of dental plants, prints. No, <laughs> although that's you know that's not a bad idea. A hanky. Robin zero five. Where the heck have you been? Oh, it's so good to see you, Robin. 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 Um. Edward Stewart said exactly, but preacher man's got it. Kane. Um. It, it was. It was the broken tip, a broken half of the cane. So, uh, yes, yeah, so Preacher Man, I'll give it to you. Uh, I don't think uh, Edward will disagree with me. I mean, I say as long as you're close enough, I give you the point. Uh, so, yes, uh, nobody was getting it. I gave a little hint. Um, it was the broken tip, broken half of the cane. So, there you go. Uh, you people are typing so much faster than me. Arg says J. Dotto by. So a preacher man got the point. Uh, awesome on you on the board. Uh, congratulations. Broken canes makes me think of the Wolfman. Uh, candy cane. So yeah, very good, very good. Let's move on to. Let's see how many more questions do I got here. Um. Oh, I do got to get this question in here. Here we go. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, let's see. You know, this is a tough one, too. And Watch somebody get it now. But this is a tough question. Let me see if you guys can get it. Okay? Does anyone know the name of the film where Stan Laurel creates a parody of the John Barry Moore 1920 performance of this film. Okay, so uh, it's not this film, but it's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde related. But I needed to throw this question in there because I'm such a fan of Lauren Hardy. Uh, does anyone know the name of the film where Stan Laurel creates a parody of John Barrymore's 1920 performance? 
What? what? I thought I was going to get you. And I knew RTN. Um, it's not Puckle, but I, you know, I, I know you know what you're talking about. So you get the point. Um, do you know what year that was, RTN? Just by any chance, what year that is? Um, yes, Stan Laurel played uh, the the character John Barrymore's character from 1920 uh, in Dr. Pickle and Mr. Pride. Dr. Pickle and Mr. Pride. And I'm curious. Yeah, oh, there you go. Rich Cat Ranch, 1925. Oh, RTN, 1924. That wasn't a point, but I, I was curious if anybody knew. Um, yes, Rich Cat Ranch, 1925. Um, oh, man. I'm coming to the end of the show. My, my throat's tickling. I need to eat. Um, so, yes, yes. Fans of, of Laurel and Hardy... Stan Laurel, Dr. Pickle, and Mr. Pride, 1925. Look it up. RTN, seven points. Rich Cat Ranch, eight points. And yes, I'm going to continue. I got, I think, two more questions. Let's see. Let me look. Let's see. <coughs> I got one more question. Well, I, I can do two more. No, I got one more question. One more question. I'll throw one more question out there. It's kind of an easy one. What is the A, B, C, or D? What is the runtime of the film? Is it A, 80 minutes, B, 92 minutes, C, 69 minutes, or D, 94 minutes? Last question of the evening. Uh, A, 80 minutes, B, 92 minutes, C, 69 minutes, or D, 94 minutes? Who gets the last question of the evening? I have to send you a collection of my horror films so I might be able to answer any of these questions. Uh, relaxing music for sleep. You're going to send me a collection of your horror films? So I might be able to answer any of these questions. Well, you got to send me an email so you ca I can tell you where to send it. Uh, anyways. Um, oh! So close, but yet so far. The original runtime, RTN Productions and Relaxing Music for Sleep, was 80 minutes. But the extra footage they found has been added, and the actual runtime of the film now is 92 minutes B. 92 minutes B. So tab 75 gets the last point of the evening. It is 92 minutes. 92 minutes. So, there you go. Um, what are the choices again? Uh, so, yeah, no, we're over. And Rich Cat Ranch wins Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde Trivia Night. So, congratulations to Rich Cat Ranch for that. 83 thumbs up. Be sure to hit the thumbs up before you leave. Be sure to join the channel. Or Patreon for movie nights and much, much more. Uh, also, Dragnet overnight tonight. Dragnet up all night. Um, and uh, let's see, coming up uh, tomorrow night, be sure to join me and Ginger at 8 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow night uh, as we talk up another movie discussion. Um, the Editor from 2014. Uh, it is a modern Giallo classic. It's at the top of a lot of people's list for Giallo films. So I figure, what the heck, I'm going to give a new movie, newer movie, a chance. And I'm going to see if it is up to all the hype that it's gotten. So uh, there you go. I'm going to uh, do that tomorrow night. And then uh, Tracy may have Warren back on Monday to talk about all his tech gear and share videos of the tech side of paranormal investigations uh not sure yet don't hold me to that um and tuesday spooky ghost stories let's get ready for halloween so i will be here talking uh spooky stories and other things and you guys can share in the chat i've gotten a couple stories that i can read off to uh that a couple people i know chris w sent me something uh so i will definitely get to that too um there's the links thank you tracy to join the channel or the patreon and uh, both of those get you quite a bit. 
the editor is a spoof a giallo yes mike barrett yes 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 uh it's it's kind of a it pays homage to all the old um giallo films uh but it is considered a giallo because it's spoofing the giallo genre so i've never seen it and i'm curious on it and people put it at the top of their list for films so uh let's let's see if it's something totally different than what i'm expecting because i've never seen it before uh that's what it's all about the movie discussions every wednesday and saturday or no wednesday and sunday 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 thanks everyone can't wait for next saturday's party yes next saturday there will not be a trivia night because next saturday i think i got it an hour early at 7 p.m so an hour earlier uh, i will have a link for people to join in costume if you want i hope people do um it'll be fun we will chat um talk halloween uh, just have fun it'll be like a halloween party and that's what it is and we should have a lot of fun there so there you go um this is halloween this is halloween 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 oh, yep yep lots of love to you late later show family see you guys all over at the dragnet up all night let me end this stream much love to each and every one of you to horror junkie who who gave the gifts out to members and um to everybody who gave super chats thank you to everybody to all you in chat who participated this week uh i'll have my costume on dino oh awesome uh, yes cool cool i'm gonna be in costume so you know let's make this fun it's gonna be a fun night i'll walk around here with uh, we'll give an award out it's gonna be fun it's gonna be